Hi, and welcome to a video of the second version of my program, which um, allows Sonic Pi to be controlled by means of a Touch OSC um, program running on my iPad. And as before, the iPad screen is shown here by means of a, a QuickTime recording preview window. And we have Sonic Pi here. And the other elements uh, on view are a MIDI player X, which is going to play a MIDI file, and um, a terminal window, which is showing that there are three MIDI ports set up uh, on this system, uh, one of which is a virtual port using the IAC driver, and that is going to allow MIDI input to be fed into Sonic Pi. The second is my USB oxygen uh, keyboard, an MO audio keyboard, and the third is um, a touch OSC bridge, which acts as a MIDI port, which enables me to connect to um, touch OSC running on my iPad. Um, these give the numbers of the ports, 0, 1 and 2, and these are their names, and these are utilized in the program. Now, since last time, I have completely rewritten the program and um, expanded the facilities that it can uh, cater for. One result is that the program is now quite long and it won't fit into a buffer or run in a buffer. And so I'm using the run file command here to run the program. Um, this is the location and name of the program on my machine. Just to run through the, um, the system now, um, as uh, probably the best thing to do is we actually just start it and I can illustrate the uh, features in the uh, extra features on the touch screen. So, We'll come up here and we we'll use the short can, uh, hand uh, to run it, uh, Apple R. And that runs the program. And you'll notice that on the right hand side, uh, we now have the screen initialized. Um, some of it is the same as before. Along the top, we have got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different sliders uh, cut off, uh, G verb. Uh, mod phase, this is the rate at which the uh, uh, one of the mod uh, synths like uh, mod beep or mod uh, saw are going to be uh, modulated. The uh, thing which is enabled other volume is the volume other than the keyboard, in other words for whatever MIDI inputs you have coming into the machine, in this case coming in from the MIDI player in the minute. And then we have three which govern the attack, sustain and release of the envelope of all the uh, synths which will be used in Sonic Pi. As before, we have a pitch bend control here, and we have three buttons which can set it to its maximum, minimum, or zero position by tapping them. And the button to marked toggle mod range switches on the uh, modulation of the mod uh, synth. Um, simply does this by changing the range of the modulation from 0 when the button is off to 12, in other words, up an octave when the button is pushed. Now the difference here is that we have now got the ability to have all of the um, channels um, shown. Now I just noticed that one thing is not initialized on this, uh, all of the um, pictures along the bottom here uh, we've just got two of them which say piano. They should all be saying piano. Uh, sometimes the first time the program is run, there's so much happening when it starts off, it just uh, doesn't quite initialise that. I'm going to stop it and rerun it, and hopefully at this time it will initialise properly. There we go. We've got a few more of them. Um, try one more time. There we are. All of them done there. Uh, as I say, the program is quite new, and there's probably some tweaking that needs to be done. There's an awful lot going on in the initialisation phase, because there are some 50 different links between the programs, uh, some of them in, in both directions. Uh, a lot of them are from uh, a slide uh, variable being fed into the into Sonic Pi. But um, the things which change visually, like the name of the synth, uh, like the position of the slider below that, which enables you to change the synth, which you can see happening there, um, and the um, three different routes which we have on the machine now, which is changed by that uh, whitish button. Um, all of those involve signals coming back from um, Sonic Pi to the um, Touch OSC uh, program, and that's done because Sonic Pi is capable of sending OSC messengers, messages 
um, which will carry this information. The main addition now is that instead of having the same synth applied to everything that is uh, um, producing sound, apart from the keyboard, which previously I had uh, uh, able to select the synth separately, we now have a, an extra position here on the right hand side where we can specify channels individually. You can see as I alter this red button here that the actual channel which is active is shown here, the selected route from which we are going to specify a different um, synth. So if I leave that on channel one and I now adjust this, you can see that that's now saying saw in the, in the yellow box above. But if you look down below the red um, dot here on channel one, you'll see that the synth name there is also now saw. So that synth is set to saw, that channel set to saw, all the other input channels are set still to piano. And we can go on to say channel two and we can set that to something else that's set to sign. Uh, we can go to channel three and set that to dark ambience and so on all the way along there. In order to get things back to some semblance of uniformity again, if I switch back to the all channels mode, then the name above here is now the one which would actually be playing for all the channels, even though we've still got those individual settings below. The all channels setting overrides this. But if we want to reset everything, I can, for example, press the purple button which says reset all channels, and it will transfer the all channels setting to all of the 16 channels below. So that when we go into that mode, whichever channel we select, they're all the same. And we would have to start reallocating them. So let's set them back to uh, their starting position, which was all uh, piano, which I do by setting, um, or we do in this one, set all channels back to piano and then press the purple button, they're all set back to piano, and we're back where we were to start with. Right, so that's, those are the main changes that we've taken place. The other one is in the muting of the channels. Now we can just select channels individually. When the blue light is on, the channel is active. When it is not on, the channel is muted. So the blues show the active channels, which we've got there, and by default it sets one channel active. Now, the piece I'm going to play has got, uses two channels, so I'm going to unmute the first two, and we're going to preset some of the um, synths that we use. Let's set um, this one to mod D saw, um, and I'm going to now switch to the channel here, and I'm going to set the first channel to... Um, chip lead and I'm going to set the second channel to uh, mod pulse will do that's fine so when we're in the all channels uh, situation everything is going to be output to mod desaw when we're in the channels selected route then we're going to have uh, channel one playing on chip lead and channel two playing on mod pulse and all this two here shows me is which channel I'm actually altering if I wanted to alter any of the other ones. <coughs> so that's now ready to go. Let's set uh, suitable values here. We'll set the cutoff up a bit. Reverb is reasonable it is. Volume somewhere in the middle. And we'll set a fairly low attack and fairly low release and a sustain something like that. Perhaps just as completeness, let's go and set the keyboard to be, um, let's say, TB303. So we've got three settings there. Mod saw in the all channels setting. Um, keyboard uh, is set to TB303. And when we go to the channels, that's showing us what channel one is, and that's channel two. They will both be outputting on separate uh, synths. So we've got a lot more flexibility now than we had previously. And just to prove that it's actually working, let's just play something on the keyboard. We'll turn the keyboard volume up. And as before, we can show that the pitch burn works. Set it back to zero. 
and Dan Rockty. So that's gone through most of the features. Let's now get ready to play. Um, on the MIDI player here, I've set it to auto play and it will actually auto loop when that's in white. If it's in, in blue, it'll play it once and then stop. Um, and if there's several uh, files dropped on top, it uh, will just go through them one after the other. And if I have it grey, it'll just play whatever's in there once and then stop. So we'll set that back to white. And I'm going to start playing um, a Scott Lock the Joplin rag um, by simply taking the file here and dropping it on here and off we go. Switching between all channels and the channel mode. There we have it. Well, let's start again. Well, let's go with it.
little run through uh, uh, a bit of ragtime and I hope you've enjoyed listening to the program. Thanks for watching.